Um, as you know that uh, uh, Ajahn Varma is uh, ordained in um, Sri Lanka as a 10 precept nun. At the time, there's no uh, bhikkhuni ordination. That her preceptor is, is, a, is a Sri Lankan monk, uh, Venerable Pia Ratana, and her teacher is Ayakema. So she went uh, from... Um, of course, from Australia to join uh, uh, the training in the Sri Lanka. And uh, when she was uh, being invited um, to uh, BSWA, to be uh, the uh, founder, the abbot uh, of uh, uh, Dhammasara, she told me that she said, initially, they only promised only a 50 acres of land, only a small land with a small house on there and which she can manage to start, uh, to start it off because by herself. But when she arrived in Perth, she said, she said, I have this 583 acres of land with nothing on it, except they're going to give her a caravan. She said, it's a big difference, it's a shock from what she expect, that she agree upon. Uh, but there you go, she take up the challenge. Um, she just said, okay, she just uh, do what needs to be done. I'm from uh, Asian background, and seeing her from an Australian uh, nun, that she bowed down with so much faith and devotion when we are at all the pilgrimage sites, so I'm hooked. I was like, yes, I. Uh, there's someone that I can learn from, and there's something that she has that I don't have that I would like to be, uh, have the peace and happiness like her. I was really impressed by Ajahn Vayama, that I met her because a uh, uh, few things that she do, especially, you know, she, we, when you're on pilgrimage, we used to have uh, uh, some food that, that we can't finish. Uh, we all just give it to the tour leader and just distribute it out. She would keep some food and she give it to the dogs and uh, on the street. Um, because I'm one of the so-called young ones around, so I used to run after her say, I'm the chaperone. So I went with her. So she really feed, put it down and feed the dogs. I was like a bit uh, touched by her kindness, even to the dogs, uh, because she said, well, everyone probably will remember the human beings, but no one will remember the dogs that uh, have no food as well. Um, my first uh, weekend uh, retreat experience is with, with Ajahn Vayama. She, at the time, conducted uh, all the weekend retreats at Safety Bay, and I met her there. I must say, I can tell some uh, stories, is uh, she told me off when I, uh, in my first uh, uh, retreat. Um, I went in for the first time, I wasn't from Theravada, uh, Theravada tradition, and uh, after work, and uh, joined the retreat, and I was so tired, I'm not used to sitting on the floor, so I, like everyone else, put my feet up, pointed to her, and uh, uh, put a statue, and she said to me, the lady in red, uh, uh, it is uh, not appropriate uh, for you to point your feet to the teacher and as well as the, to the shrine. I tuck it in and very grumpy and sit there and say, how dare you <laughs> tell me off. And I myself was really rebellious the whole retreat. Uh, Ajahn Vahman used to do the, um, in, in the retreat, she used to have a fish, a wooden fish, so she would get uh, everyone to line up, then to go around in a circle, and she would hit the fish, when she, wooden fish. When she go fast, the rhythm, fast rhythm, you got to go walk fast. When she goes slow, you go slow. That's a way to promote uh, mindfulness, so that, you, so that you don't think about anything else. You just put your mind in one place, listening to the rhythm, and you just walk with the rhythm. So it's a way to uh, 
a tool to practice to get our mind rather than thinking about what I'm going to do after the retreat, but just to focus on walking. I was so grumpy that weekend that I, when Ajahn Vahama said, hit the fish really fast, I purposely walked really slow. I remember some of the old Buddhist society members at the back of me, they're all really looking at this lady who can't walk according to the rhythm. Actually, I, later on, I told her, I said, it's just because I'm rebellious. I said, oh, I'm not going to do what you want me to do. See what happened. I end up to become a nun. <laughs> and she's my teacher. Because I've, um, after that experience, I realized that, hey, you know, she's, it, she's a good teacher. She's willing, someone willing to tell me off to say, hey, we practice this way. Don't just do what you want to do. Just uh, that is a uh, look at that. You look at your defilements. I was trying to decide whether I study, uh, let, just basically move to Victoria to study uh, Chinese medicine. I started one semester and I went to see Ajahn Varma. I said, well, I don't know what I should do. You know, I should, should I go to Victoria or not? I got to pack up everything and move to Victoria in order to study Chinese medicine because I need to do, uh, you know, acupuncture and all those pulse diagnosis you can't do through internet. And she said to me, she, my name is Jui Lei. She said, Jui, Jui, you have enough tools to help others. It is time for you to help yourself. That's all she said to me. I was like shocked. Everyone to say to me, oh, it's good to study, you know, get more degrees. It's good to make advances in your career. She's the only one who stopped me on my track and saying that, how about do more practice? You know, I already have my, at the time, I already have my uh, degree uh, practice as a pharmacist. I actually have a diploma in naturopathy. I practice as a, as a naturopath. And that's enough <laughs> studies. And she just say, that's enough. Time to practice. And I did. The next year, I end up in the monastery. When I first went into the monastery, at breakfast time, no one speak. I can tell them, say, have I done something wrong? Why does no one say anything? At the time, it's only Ajavayama, Venerable Nyoda, me, and Venerable Pasmaya. That's the first time they were there. So I was a bit anxious and still think that, hmm, what is next? And don't know what's going on. Until when Ajahn Varma speak, and then she, oh, speak means she will, sometimes she will share reflections. She, she share a small reflection she will share, and then we will the dispute work. And um, she was very practical, because she was talk, when her talk will talk about, uh, I think I was a shrine person, I got to put the clock back after dana, after breakfast, I could put the clock back in the shrine. Um, so after you put it back, uh, then the breakfast start, and we all sit quietly. But when I just look at the clock, it is crooked. Wow. <laughs> and she gave a talk on mindfulness, how you should put your clock back. You know, whatever you do, be mindful, make sure that you, know, you don't just simply go there and slap it on and just go move on to the next thing. The monastery, you try to, that's how you practice from externally, the mindfulness. And her talk will be saying, you know, how to turn your, the doorknob. We sometimes, most, some of us will be in a hurry. You just, just press the doorknob and push the door open and rush in. And if someone's sitting meditating next to you, you can hear, you can understand how this the thing it is. And Ajahn Varma used that as a talk. I remember I'm Anagarika boiling water. I'm not sure you remember how the old time uh, in the nun's cottage, there's a in the kitchen, there's a table. And next to the table, um, there's the uh, urn boiling water. So we are sitting on the table having our tea. I'm in charge of boiling water. So when it boiled, I just quickly get up and just Boom, turn to whatever zero, that I think zero, and walk back. Ajahn turned around and asked me, do you know how many steps you take from my seat to the urn? I look at her and say, uh, <laughs> those things 
I still remember it. So it is really forming a foundation to say, hey, stop, not go so fast. Uh, that is part of the training. Training as a nun under Ajahn Vahama, or as a trainee, uh, for me, uh, I already in my already a pharmacist and a naturopath, and when in there, you got to uh, listen to be a junior and being told what to do. Um, but to me, it's a tremendous amount of benefits. It really grind my ego. In the past, you would say, um, yeah, you're not quite sure. you, you, you raise your mindfulness and she will ask me. Then I got to, you know, pull myself back. And the great thing is I discussed the Dharma with her. I used to do teaching, um, meditation day. I'll have the discussion with her, how I'm going to do it. And am I getting my concept, and my understanding of Buddhism right? So that's how uh, she still continued to teach me. And now um, she still, I can understand her because I speak to her all the time. So um, she still will uh, speak to me about different concept uh, ideas. I show her the questions. Uh, she do give me some uh, uh, suggestion or uh, tell me that, okay, how about look at it in this way? And she also showing the exact teaching by example, how she deal with her uh, sickness and um, Old age, yes, yeah, 65 is old age <laughs> and sickness and her impending death. How she take care, how she deal with it, how does she, nobody likes it, but how she at ease with it, how is she accepting it. So there's a teaching in action. Tamaham Sankham Sirasa Namami